Welcome to Investors Insights. Uh, first, we hope everybody had a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, today's topic is companies versus consumer. And so we want to address uh, the strong corporate earnings we're seeing versus the conflicted consumer and lower consumer sentiment. So let me start off by talking about strong corporate earnings. As you can see in this graphic, over 95% of S&P 500 companies have reported results. And the first quarter earnings growth for the index is tracking to a 9.1% year-over-year year increase. That's an upside surprise of more than four percentage points. Uh, we've also seen a 13.6% increase in revenue growth, uh, with 73% of companies beating revenue estimates and 78% of companies beating earnings estimates. So disappointing uh, retail results don't take away from the fact that overall uh, results are really solid uh, this earnings season. Uh, and the fact is corporate America is healthy. And this is despite the cost pressures and the supply chain disruptions we've seen. So I talked about the strong corporate earnings. Trey, talk about the consumer. Two weeks ago, we talked about lower consumer sentiment. Give us an update on the consumer and also inflation. Yeah, thanks, Bobby. So you're right. We've been watching consumer sentiment, it is, and it has been falling very fast. And you know, that doesn't really line up with what we're seeing in the jobs numbers. Typically, you see when jobs numbers are this strong, a very happy consumer. We're seeing wages go up. We're seeing jobs be plentiful. So why is the consumer uh, so down right now? And our research partners at Strategic provided us with this chart that we found, I found very interesting. It pretty much probably explains why the consumer is so negative. What this shows is the growth rate in the cost of just core goods of food at home, plus the mortgage rate increase, plus gasoline price change. And it shows that year over year, there's been a 20% increase in those core goods and the cost of those core goods. That's likely leading to the consumer having a negative sentiment on the market and the economy. However, based on the numbers you just went over with corporate America and what we've seen in GDP numbers, the consumer is still spending. Where are the consumer spending? We're seeing that the consumer, even though they're negative, they're still willing to go into debt. We've seen consumer loans start to increase. Well, that's usually a sign of the consumer confidence where consumers are willing to take on debt. They're typically more positive. So it, it probably indicates that the consumer will continue to spend and are very confident in their own job, uh, job situation, but are not necessarily as confident in the overall economy and not as confident in certain areas of the economy, particularly gas prices and mortgage rates. So some are watching closely, kind of get under the hood and behind, you know, behind the scenes of what's driving this consumer sentiment and spending and looking forward to where corporate America's profits will come from. Yeah, we, we need to keep continuing to watch uh, the consumer here. Uh, and then, Ty, we've been uh, watching the housing market carefully. We've seen rates go higher, uh, tracking housing to see if higher rates are impacting the housing market. Talk about that. Yeah, so in our previous vlog, uh, we discussed how the Fed, um, they're trying to fight inflation. It was kind of having a, a bigger impact on corporations to this point than consumer. Um, you know, on the flip side, uh, last week we got the uh, housing numbers and, and they absolutely dropped down 16% month over month. It, it's starting to reflect on the consumer. I think we can all agree that, you know, while the housing number was disappointing in a sense, um, it kind of got ahead of itself. Everything was hot. Uh, and I think the Fed is going to welcome um, this, this slowdown a little bit. Now, uh, prices are still up. Uh, obviously, rates are up. So, you know, at this point, people are still paying more of the ones that are paying homes at, at higher rate you know, higher costs for the home. Um, we want that to temper down, but at least sales are down. Um, so I think the Fed is going to actually take this as a positive uh, and, and try to spin it in a way of, you know, we're, we're you know, the, the economy is finally cooling down a little bit. Yeah, Adam, last week, the market continued to be choppy. So uh, technicals are uh, very important today. So talk about that. I appreciate it, Bobby. Y'all gave a lot of good consumer data. And what we like to do with that is go back and correlate that with the technicals. You know, on a week to week basis, I like to give you a short term resistance and support level. So today I want to do something a little bit different and look at a longer term approach. So our short to intermediate term resistance level is currently sitting at 4,120. And the support level is currently sitting at 3,850. These are important numbers to look at, you know, for the next few weeks to months. Um, also looking out towards the end of the year, a more long term resistance level is currently sitting at 4,300. The support level is sitting at 3,600. So these are really important numbers, not only to look at, but kind of gauge uh, with the momentum in the markets and see if we do cross over these levels, we don't just do it with a day worth of trading, but it actually sits there and continues to sit there for the longer term. So these are important numbers to look at, you know, reaching out toward the end of the year. Yeah, thanks, Adam. 
Uh, so again, uh, we hope everyone had a great Memorial Day weekend and holiday. And as always, the market's not dull. So if you have any questions, please reach out to us, call us, email us, uh, come in for a meeting. Uh, we can meet over Zoom as always. Uh, have a great rest of the week. We'll talk next Monday. Thanks. Mm -hmm.